Hey, are you using long division? Isn't it just long and boring? Does its endless tediousness just make you want to quit? Well, hold on. Stop doing long division. Fill yourself together, man. Because I'm about to give you the secret math hacks. Hacks that most math teachers haven't been telling you for years. So hold on. Welcome to Map Hacks, where we give you the secret scoop on all the best hacks for all your favorite map operations. The time has come at last to hack division. But first, let's take a look at how we normally do division. We normally do long division. What's the problem with long division? It's so long. It takes up so much space and so much real estate on your paper and it's long, and it's boring, and it's just long. Needless to say, I don't like long division. I might even like it less than I do carrying and borrowing, and you know how much I like that. The good news is, there's a better way to divide. But before I get to that, let me just share with you some dime a dozen hacks that can make your life a lot easier for most division problems. First off, dividing by five. Take a good look at 13,427 divided by 5. Looks pretty long, right? Just multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and what do you get? You get 26,854 divided by 10. Oh my goodness! I'm just divided by 10 now, so all I have to do is move the decimal point over. And that's it! That's it! So the answer is 2,685.4. That, that was really easy. Another thing you can do, just like with multiplication, is you can factor both numbers. Take a look at the problem 2,224 divided by 28. Notice that you can divide both numbers by 4 to get the problem 556 divided by 7, which is a lot easier. Another thing you can do is you can demolish the zero. When you're dividing two numbers, and they both end in a zero, then you can just cancel the zeros, and it's going to be the same problem, except easier. Another interesting thing you can do is you can use negative remainders. That's right, you can actually use negative remainders. Take a look at 3,120 divided by 64. It's easy to do 64 times 50, right? I mean, it's just 64 times 5, and then you add a 0 at the end. So that gives you 3,200, which is too big. But, I mean, whatever. We're just going to keep on going with that. So if we do 3,120 minus 3,200, we get negative 80. And so that's our answer. 50 with the remainder of negative 80. But that's not really neat, you could say. It's going to take at least 2 times 64 to turn the remainder into a positive number. So we subtract 2 from the 50 to get 48, and then we do 2 times 64 minus 80 to get the remainder. 128 minus 80 equals 48. So, the answer is 48 with a remainder of 48. So, what are we going to do instead of long division? Well, have you ever thought about why they called it long division? It's not because the process is long, though it is. It's because there's actually a method called short division. Who knew, right? I'm surprised they don't teach short division everywhere instead of long division, because it's, I mean, it's so much shorter. See for yourself, look at 753 divided by 4. What's the first step in this? We look at how many times those 4 go into 7. It goes in once, with a remainder of 
3. We write the 1 up top, as we do in long division, and we write the remainder of the 3 in between the 7 and the 5. The next step is to look at how many times those 4 go into 35. 4 goes into 35 8 times with the remainder of 3. Next step, we look at how many times does 4 go into 33. 4 goes into 33 8 times with a remainder of 1. So the answer is 188 with a remainder of 1. So much shorter, right? And you save tons of space by only having to write the remainders. But short division has its limitations. If your divisor is greater than 20, there's actually a better way to do it. Combining short division with some Vedic techniques, you can do division with divisors greater than 20 a lot faster than you would with just long division or short division. So let me start off with the example of 14,351 divided by 29. The first step in this case is to add 1 to 29 to make the number 30. Next, we kind of ignore the 0 and the 30, but we have to do one important thing. We have to remove the remainder over by one spot on the division problem. Next, we look at how many times does 3 fit into 14. It fits in 4 times, so we write the 4 up top, and we write the remainder of 2 down below, like we do in short division. The next step is a little complicated. We have to do 4 times 1 plus 23, and that gives 27. And now we see how many times does 3 fit into 27. It fits in 9 times, so we write the 9 up top, and it fits in perfectly, so there's no remainder this time. In the next step, we do 9 times 1 plus 5 equals 14, and 3 goes into 14 4 times. So we put the 4 up, and there's the remainder of 2 down between the 1 and the 5. And now we just do the remainder step. So it's 21 plus the 4. So the answer to that is 25. And that's the answer. 494 with a remainder of 25. Let me just throw out another example. Let's do 591 divided by 27. So now we add 3 to get 30. Again, we kind of ignore the 0 and move the remainder over by 1. How many times does 3 fit into 5? It fits in once with a remainder of 2. So we put the 1 up and put the 2 in between the 5 and the 9. And now we do the usual steps. We do 3 times 1 this time, plus 29, and we get 32. 3 fits into 32 10 times, with a remainder of 2. But, wait a minute, how are we going to write that now? We have to write it like this. We put the 1 of the 10 up above the other 1, and we put the 0 down below. And for the next step, we have to remember that we're doing 10 times 3, not 0 times 3 or any of that stuff. 3 times 10 plus 21 equals 51. So we have a remainder of 51, which is bigger than 27. Means we can fit an extra 1 into the answer. So the answer is 21 with a remainder of 24. The, the remainder of 24 comes from 51 minus 27. All right, one more example. Let's have 912 divided by 23. This time, we go down 3 to 20. As usual, we ignore the 0 and move the remainder over by 1. And now we do the usual. 2 goes into 9 4 times with a remainder of 1, and we write that as usual. And now we do the usual. We do 4 times negative 3 plus 11, and the answer to that is negative 1. And then we... Uh, uh, oh, oh, wait, wait a minute. Negative, wait, what? We can't do, we, we can't do anything with negative one. So, uh, I guess our adventure is at an end or something? Well, not really. You can do some minor course corrections with this. 
So, first things first, you reduce 4 in this case by 1 to 3. You always reduce it by 1. Next, you increase the remainder number in between 1 and 9 in this case by 2 to get 3. And now you can do the usual steps. You can do negative 3 times 3 plus 31, and that works out to 22. Very nice. No negative numbers or anything. 2 goes into 22 11 times. We've already run into this problem. We put the tens digit of 11 up above the 3, and we put the ones digit next to the 3. And now we do the remainder step. So we do 11 times negative 3 plus 2 to get the remainder. Negative 31. And oh my goodness, negative 31, it's a negative number. But wait, we're not panicking since it's a remainder. We don't care about negative remainders. They're cool with us. But if you wanted a positive remainder, let's say, you'd have to reduce 41 by 2 and get 39. And to get the remainder, you'd have to do... 23 times 2 minus 31. So 46 minus 31, and that is a remainder of 15. And so the answer is 39 with a remainder of 15. Alright, so quick summary. First off, try to modify the problem to make it easier for you. You can double it, or factor it, or do whatever. Then you can use short division. Short division works well with divisors under 20, but if you have a divisor above 20, you can use the Vedic division. Using these three methods, you can do division a lot faster than you could with long division. I have no idea why they don't teach this everywhere instead of long division. I'm guessing everyone's still listening to this old Yoda guy and keep preaching on about how to beware the quick and easy math. But personally, I prefer the quick and easy math. If you can simplify a problem, then go for it. And with that, I say... With Vedic math, the dark side is stronger. Do you want to follow the quick and easy math? Would you like to foresee divisibility almost instantly? Would you like to use the force of the square and square root? Well then, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button. And as always, keep on hacking.